mighty name, O oh God. Father, we love you on tonight and we praise you on tonight. And thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, oh God, thank that you are our unseen yes, partner. You are partner. And yes, Father, Lord. you never fail us. Yes, Lord. Oh God, so we invite your spirit in this place on tonight, oh God. We give you permission to move as you please in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you manifest your gifts in this house on tonight, Lord God. Heal, deliver, and set free in the name of Jesus. Lord God, touch our candlestick on tonight, Lord God. Lord, touch your lips, oh God. Give her words, Lord God, of wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, that will take us to new places in you that we've never experienced before in the name of Jesus. Oh God, come through this place like a mighty rushing wind, oh God, and free up your people in every area of their lives. And Lord God, as always, We'll forever give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In the mighty, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Let's worship. I, I had a great yes. song, but I think we need to worship. Yes. I think we need to worship. That would be wonderful. Thank yes, you, I think we Oh, need hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. yes. Glory to God. He for dead. He had no clue that he was making me for who God had created me to be from the beginning. That because of all the things that this young woman went through, mm -hmm. <clears throat> My Lord, she has been in and out of my jail numerous of times, probably, yes, before I had even got there. Mm -hmm. And if I ever would have ran across her, she would have been my, one of my friends, because I do have friends in jail. And I love them because when I look at their testimony and I'm looking at them because I don't judge them by who they are because I already know it's their testimony. Those are the ones that I love so much. You know, those are the ones that I encourage so much. And I tell them, if God can bring me through, he can bring you through. And he's not a respecter of person. So, you know, like, um, she is to be honored because she wore many crowns. And see, and I didn't even know her like that until I read her testimony. It ain't too much in her testimony that ain't mine. Let me cross, see if there's anything I can cross out. Maybe one. <laughs> Wait up to and jails and everything else was what God came and got me for that day. Mm, hallelujah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So she left a legacy. She left all the people behind that her ministry, her testimony touched and changed their lives. Y'all got that? Amen. So I honor um, Dr. Soki, Neza. I honor her life right now because that's amazing. And so it was like, I guess God said at that time, baby, you finished. Come on home. You did well, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I can imagine how the host of angels were crowded around her. And all of them was all so happy and joyous because she was coming home. I think the, the sad part of the story would have been and she died in the world, but she died in the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. She went home. She didn't die. She transitioned, she transitioned. home she transitioned. to the Lord. Yes, yeah, she transitioned. <laughs> she transitioned. So that's amazing. That's amazing. <clears throat> and you know what I want to talk about today mm -hmm. is growing up spiritually. Because she didn't come out of the world and step into the kingdom and all of a sudden had it all together. I know she did. None of us did, did we? 
We was jacked up from the flow up, you know. So I want to talk about that today. Um, and I want to talk about that today in honor of her. Because even though I didn't go to jail, I should have went to jail. Y'all got that? Fill in the blank. Just fill it in. However, whatever you want to put in there, just trust me. I did. <laughs> yeah. And see, and I didn't know all of this. I only met her one time. Mm -hmm. And she was at somebody's, um, what was it? Was it graduation? Somebody's graduation or either she came for uh, somebody's ordination. I don't know what, what she came for, but she was there. And, you know, and when she walked past me, she was just like, hey, you know, <laughs> you know. And I was like, hey, you know, how are you? And that was it. It was just in passing. But I didn't know that. So this was my sister. Yeah, this, this was my sister, so I can't wait to hear her testimony. My Lord Jesus. I ain't gonna leave you all. <laughs> but her testimony is my testimony. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I always tell them this, you didn't have to do it, but you did. <laughs> And I'm so grateful, you know what I mean? But today I want to talk about growing up spiritually because it is a growing experience. And just like any infant, any child, any uh, a young adult, and any adult, we make uh, mistakes along the way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I want to hit it on two aspects is is this, is to see yourself in it and to know how to treat those that come into the kingdom and what to expect and how to handle them. You know what I mean? Amen? So if you could please, Father, I thank you. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I, I bless you and I praise you and I glorify you. And so I yield everything unto you, Spirit of the living God. Let your power be released and touch the hearts of the hearers in the name of Jesus. And Father, I'll forever give you the glory, I'll forever give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, if you could please turn to Ephesians 4 and 11. And while you turn in there, I remember when we were at um, Azusa World Ministries over on 51st Avenue and Thomas and um, Miss Jackie ran the um, the author ministry, and me and Kim used to call it the birthing room mm -hmm. because spiritually it was the birthing room, and people would come back there and they would rededicate their lives. Now they would do it in the sanctuary, but when they came back there, it, it, it was just totally different. It was totally different, and people would come back there. And, you know, we would pray with them if they needed it. If they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, um, we would uh, 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 pray with them and everything. Um, people came back there to receive uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and it wasn't a place for any kind of person to operate in. Just anybody couldn't go in that ministry. You know, they might come and stay for a little while, but they didn't, they didn't stay long because that was a specialty. And that ministry was for people who had a heart for God's people and a love for his people. And so from there on, when they came out of that ministry, when they came out from there and we would get the information, the first thing Miss Jackie said, well, did y'all call them? <laughs> well, I didn't see none of them here. <laughs> and she was right. She was right. Because what? They were babies. They were babies. Amen? Amen? Go to Ephesians 4, 11, and 15, and I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Amen? So y'all just keep that in mind, right? Because they were babies. They were babies. Did you say Ephesians? Ephesians 4, 11, and uh, we're going to read down to 15. Yes. And it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers, for what? To equip his people for works of service, 
so that the body of Christ may be built up. 13 says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become what? Mature. Amen? Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people in their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. Amen? That we what? It says here, it says that until we reach unity and faith in the knowledge of the Son of God and what? Become mature. Attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen? It says, we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching. And you know what? A lot of uh, babes that are in the body of Christ, they do just that very thing. Mm -hmm. They're blown here to this ministry and they're blown here to that ministry and who's teaching this over here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I like a lot of teaching. I listen to a lot of teaching on YouTube. I do a lot of that. Um, but I have certain teachers that I know that are reputable, right? And I know that those are the ones that I listen to. But you'll find babies and they'll go here and they'll go there and then they'll get upset and then they're blown over here and then all of a sudden there are people treating them nice over here and then now they're tossed over there and they're to and fro. And there's no steadiness in them, right? Because they're what? They're babies, mm -hmm. right? And those babies, can I say this? Those are the babies who don't have a caretaker. Yes, Not a pastor, but a caretaker. Now the pastor gets up and he delivers the word, right? And he counsels, he does all of that. But it's the people that is in leadership to take on that responsibility to help that baby learn how to get up and do for itself. Amen? Amen. 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 So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about no longer, no longer to be infants in the body of Christ, but full grown and mature. God is desiring for us to grow up spiritually in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. One of the things I have to say is that even after all of the years of walking with Christ, amen, when I was putting this together, I see me in there. <laughs> amen? Because I don't believe that any of us, amen, have, have it all put together. Right. But one thing that will keep us in the strength of God is that unity and love. Amen? One for another. Amen? So let me say this. Maturity is shown in the body of Christ through our love for each other and unity and faith in the what? Knowledge of Christ. When there is no unity or love, we are like mere humans with no real knowledge of Christ in us. And it is so amazing once we really come to the realization and the revelation that Christ is in us. Amen? That our lives are not our lives anymore and we're not empowered. We should not be empowered by our flesh and our own desires, but our desire should be that which is of God. Amen? Hallelujah. If you could, please turn to 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 3, and we're going to read 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Hallelujah. And I'm quite sure already that I know that um, I'm going to have a part 2 to this. <laughs> Amen. Y'all there? Mm -hmm. It says, you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, how many of you have seen that in the church? A whole lot. And what that is, is a sure indicator that we're dealing with what? Some infants. And I don't want to call them immature and childish. I don't want to do that. But the thing is that they're still operating in infant behavior. Amen? That they're jealous and there's quarreling. There's envy and there's strife. Right? Amen? So let me keep going. Are you not worldly? 
And he's not saying, are you, are you not worldly? But your behavior is worldly. It's the behavior behind it. Amen? Um, and it says, are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another say, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? Meaning, um, it, said, it, it goes on to say in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that they were talking about, well, I've been baptized by Apollos, and I follow Paul, and all of this kind of stuff, you know, as if it meant something. You know what I mean? Meaning that we're different. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. Get it, Kimmy? Amen? All right. Did I say all of that on the camera? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Amen? So the most important thing is, is to talk about the stages of spiritual growth. Let's talk about the stages of spiritual growth. And the importance of loving and being patient with those that are new into the body of Christ. Uh, one of the uh, uh, stages is infancy, and the other one is childhood. The other one is adulthood, which means maturity. And let's start with the uh, infant stage, amen? So, you know, <laughs> you know, I remember my infant stage. I remember it. Go to 1 Peter 2 and 2. 1 Peter 2 and 2. That is great. It's reading King James. You want King James up there? No, no. You can, you can just leave it just like it is. Yeah. Because I have the scripture on here. It says, like newborn babes crave for, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it they may grow up and so that they may grow up in their salvation. I'm going to keep the glasses on. Amen? Mm -hmm. So how is it that the newborn babes are raised up, they're raised up on the milk of the world. Yes. You can't you can't give them the meat. Mm -hmm. You can't give them the, the chewed up food because they, they're not ready for it. They can only right now handle the meat of the, the, the milk of the world. Amen. So here we go. Point number one. Just like newborn babies, all they know is to eat and say, rock me. Mm -hmm. And to change my diaper. The same with newborn Christians. They need us to do everything for them. Everything. Everything. And, and I thank God that when I first came into the, uh, came back to church, I had my sisters and they did everything. Even to the point of uh, picking out my clothes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they picked out my clothes. Amen. And uh, yeah, they sure did. Mm -hmm. Kim had clothes lined up on the bed. Talk about you gonna wear this, and you can wear that. No, 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 wear this. And so she picked out my clothes because what? I was a new baby in Christ. Amen. Two says babies can't walk on their own. They have to be carried until they walk. Amen. So when we get new uh, babes in Christ, we're gonna have to carry them. And it doesn't mean that we're going to do everything, but we just don't kind of keep an eye out on them and let them know that this is what we do next and this is why we do what we do over here. It's because what? They're babies and they don't know, right? Three says we are responsible for babies. Babies don't, babies don't know and babies can't do for themselves. They are not expected to get everything right in the beginning. That is the very important part right there. That the newborns that when they come into the body of Christ, we can't expect them, amen, to get everything right. We have to keep them in prayer and keep teaching them the word of God mm -hmm. and loving on them. Yes. Amen? When I first uh, came back to church, just want to let you know I was cussing and I was fighting. Yep. That was my two things, right? Right, Kimmy? Mm -hmm. I was still cussing and I was still, oh wait, I was still smoking too. Oh, yeah, I was still smoking. But but the thing is, nobody condemned me. Want me to tell you why? Because Holy Spirit brought the conviction. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. That's Holy Spirit's job. If we're praying for them, we can be guaranteed that Holy Spirit is going to bring in conviction. Amen? Hallelujah. In the, in, the, in the pastor's office and, and ask them why come you late all the time and you da 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 you can't ask them that. They'll leave out of there and wonder why 
why you treat them so bad. Mm -hmm. But the mature Christian has to be good examples because babies learn by what they see here, whether it is good or bad. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that? Now, well, of course you do. But when we are operating in church, our behavior, the words we speak, trust me, when you think ain't nobody listening, somebody listening. And nine times out of ten, if you in front of people, all the babies are looking at you. All the babies, all new born, reborn again Christians are looking at those that come out of that pulpit. Those that come off of the praise team. Those that are ushering and greeting and, and, and they're before people. Those are the ones that they're looking for, looking at, and listening to. So we have to be good examples. Amen? Amen. I remember... Um, when me and Pastor Kimberly would make the uh, phone calls, and we had this long list, and Bishop Amundo would chase us down and give, the, give us a list that was about a thousand people on it, and told us to separate it. And we had to call all these people. You remember <laughs> Bishop Amundo would do that. And he would, when we would see him coming, we'd go out of the way, because we knew he was going to add on to our list. But calling the people was a very good maintenance mm -hmm. for members. Not only for the infants, the ones that's been there a little while, and not only for the ones that have been there years. Because you take the infant, you call them and say, well, you know, we didn't see you, and then, you know, we really missed you, and, and is everything okay? Would you like to have prayer? And you talk to the infant, and they go, yeah, well, you know, I just didn't feel like it. Well, you know, maybe, maybe you know, you give them something encouraging, and we would really love to see you again. All right, so you hang the phone up. That infant comes. The same thing with the, the, the child, but the mature one, when you call the mature one, and they are always the ones that say, did nobody call and see about me? But you remember when we were calling to see about the old the, the old timers that was in there mm -hmm. and how they were just light up. Well, honey, yes, I'm doing fine. I just didn't feel good. And thank you so much for calling. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for praying with me. Mm -hmm. And it's just all the way across the board. Mm -hmm. But what it was was we were pretty much um, ministering by phone mm -hmm. and not... Letting the people think that just because they wasn't there, that they, that they weren't thought of or, or they were missed. You know, people feel like this. If, oh, they, they missed me when I didn't come. Oh, I'll be there next Sunday. You, and they feel important, right? Amen? Mm -hmm. So and that's what we used to do. And it was very, very important for us to do that uh, because... The people needed that, amen? Mm -hmm. Go to 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and 1. 3 and 1. And I remember Kim, sometimes we would get people on the phone, especially Pastor Kim, get people on the phone, hang on there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I come upstairs, finish my phone calls, I said, girl, you still on the phone? <laughs> she said, yes, I'm talking to such and such. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> but that's what that person needed. That's what that person needed. As a matter of fact, when they passed away, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we were there. Yeah. We were there on the side of that deathbed. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as a matter of fact, uh, two generations of their family got saved that night. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it all started from the phone calls. Mm -hmm. From the phone calls. That connection came with that family. Mm -hmm. The phone calls. Amen. Yeah. First Corinthians 3 and 1 says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, meaning mature, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. Listen to this. In the babies, you will still see some worldliness. If they get sincere milk of the word, they will surely grow by the Spirit and desire, and the desire for those things will be driven out by the word of God. They will tr truly desire to please God in every way. You know, when we, when I first got back in church and, and God had delivered me from, miraculously from some things. And, and when I got back into church, I was still doing some things, smoking and cussing and, and, and fighting. You know, I'm at work anytime somebody said it was a fight and, 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 and tank number two, I'd be the first one in there. Yeah, let me grab them and cuff them and do all of that. And, and I know I had some issues, right? And I would go home and I would say, God, I did it again. And I would sit on the edge of the bed and I would just cry. God, I did it again. I did it again. But it was that 
conviction. It was that conviction because I didn't want it no more because I was constantly in the word of God. But it was like those things, I couldn't get them, I couldn't get them out of my life. But the word, listen to this, the word drove it out. Amen? I remember um, I was sitting outside with a, another officer that I used to smoke with all the time. And she turned around and she looked at me. She said, well, she said, well, since you got uh, saved and everything, and you're back in the church, you think you might want to quit smoking cigarettes? And she'd be like, this. <laughs> you think you might want to? <laughs> I was like, ding, ding, ding. I said, now this sinner over here telling me I need to quit smoking cigarettes. So you know what I mean? I started getting convicted behind it. Every time I would light up a cigarette, I would get convicted. And then finally, God took that away from me. You know what I mean? But things didn't happen overnight. So when they come in and they still smell like cigarettes, don't say nothing to them about it. Don't you know if they're sitting up under the Word long enough and they're they reading their Word, don't you know the Holy Spirit is convicting them? It's the thing that drive the baby off is when somebody said, mm, and your skirt too short. You know how the religious folks do. Your, your skirt is too short and baby, you think you might want to cover up a little bit? You know, let them folks alone because you know what? Let the Holy Spirit do his job. You know, and we have to let Holy Spirit do his job. Amen? Amen. So listen, let's talk about the innocence of an infant. Amen? Most infants are sweet and innocent. Am I right? You ever see somebody's baby and you go, oh, she's so cute, she's so cute. Cool, cool, cool. All of that, right? Ain't never done nothing in their life, right? And everybody says this thing, right? And no one thinks that the baby has a past. Whether it might be drugs, drinking, fornication, prison, jail, who, 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 who knows? To tell you the truth, they really don't. When they come out of that altar room, or they come off, of the, they come off from the altar and they have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and they repented of their sins, right then and there, their, their slate has been wiped clean. Amen? Amen? So here it is, you listening to me? Who are we to tell them about their past? Or say, oh, oh, hold on. You know, she used to, yeah, she, 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 you know. Them kind of folk. That will cause what, a baby to get upset. Guess what? And then they run away. And then, then here we go, wondering where Johnny went. Where did he go? Well, he was coming. Well, let me call him. What happened? Well, they was over there, you know, and I told somebody about my testimony. Then next time I did it, making things real messy. Amen? So all newborn babies in Christ don't have a past. Amen? No matter how they may have lived, when they were born again, they became a new man in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And they don't have a past anymore, just a testimony. Amen? And that is how we should... That, that is how we should treat them in the church, amen? amen? Their past should not be held against them. Now, there are some circumstances, if we find out some things about a past, y'all listening to me, look at me, mm -hmm. for real, and I'm not playing, but if somebody has a particular past that could be violent in any kind of way, I think we need to take it into consideration. And what I mean by consideration is that we really help them get past that point and really walk very closely amen. with them. Amen? Amen, amen? So nobody will get victimized. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all all right with me on that one? Amen. So 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore if any man be in Christ, amen, he is a new creature, all things has passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Amen? Um, another thing about infants is what happens here is their unawareness of certain things they shouldn't do. <laughs> Amen? Listen to this. If you ever had a baby that now knows how to crawl, and now you really have to keep your eye on him, don't you? Because he's always putting everything in his mouth. He's unaware to the point that everything should go in his mouth. He, he's unaware to the point that everything shouldn't go in his mouth. He doesn't know that the pill on the floor can cause him serious illness. Or if he puts a coin in his mouth, it cause him to choke to death. Sometimes with a spiritual baby, they are unaware that they can put, that they, mm, who typed that? They are unaware <laughs> to what they can put in their spirit by the things that they see and the things that they hear. 
They're not, they are so new and unaware to what they could get hold of could cause them, let me not even read that, because that's where I got one wrong. I shouldn't have read it, it's already here. Meaning that when, a, when an infant goes and starts getting into things and hearing and listening to things while they're still, while they're, while they're saved, listen to this, um, certain kind of music. Mm -hmm. um, certain things that they watch on TV. Mm -hmm. um, engaging in certain conversations. See, they, they have no reason. At that point, they should be taught not to get into those kind of things because what happens is it kind of pollutes them in their spirit, amen? Because now they're hearing and seeing some things that's contrary to what's in their spirit, right? And it's catching their attention. And if they keep hold of it long enough, if they keep hold of it long enough, they'll wind up walking away. And don't nobody, you, you know, say, well, you know, maybe, well, you know, you get in that conversation, yeah, we went to the movies, and you, well, we had a conversation yesterday at the table mm -hmm. with a bunch of other believers, and they were talking about the movies that they were watching. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me and Kim, did we watch TV? And we was like, yeah, but uh, not all of that kind of stuff. We kind of like really censor things, because the thing is, and God put it to me like this when he, when mm -hmm. he talked to me about it. It's like a strainer, right? So when we start looking and hearing things that we shouldn't hear and see, it's like a strainer. And then all of the good parts start coming out. And then all we're left with is the junk we've been listening to. You know what I mean? It's like trying to keep yourself you know, clean. Amen? And so, babies, they don't understand that. Amen? Amen? Babies, listen to this. Babies are easily discouraged. They're easily distracted. And they're easily hurt. Let's talk about childhood. Oh, my goodness. And I remember that, too. I was all over the place. Go to Ephesians 4 and 14. Listen to this, y'all. Ephesians 4 and 14. Oh, I really like that. Amen. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful schemes. You know, when, a, when the believer has grown past the milk stage, they no longer need to be rocked and they no longer need pampers. But they have grown up to childhood and now they all over the place. And they're all over the place and they want to be seen and they want to be noticed and they want to be liked and, you know, um, you kind of have to hold them still just for a little bit, kind of um, give them something to do to keep them, to keep them still. I remember I told my grandson and my um, granddaughter this, I think it was last weekend. I told my grandson, I said, go ahead and pack your game up. And he's 12. I said, go ahead and pack your game up. I said, we're getting ready to leave in a few minutes, so pack your game up. So I went and I went off and I did something else and I came back. Well, he didn't have a game packed up, right? <laughs> he was on his phone. So I said, son, I said, you didn't pack your game up. You know what he said? Oh, 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 yeah. And that's how, that's how the, the, the youngsters in the church, and I mean, I'm not saying by age, but I'm saying by spirit, they kind of all over the place and they never get nothing completed. They'll start something and they won't get it completed. And I'm looking at him and I said, well, could you do that now, son, please? And I just walked out of the room. And then I went to my granddaughter and I said, hey, I need you guys to pick up the, the paper off the floor before we get ready to leave. I come back and her and um, uh, her cousin, they t over there in the corner totally doing something else, uh, laughing and giggling, and not paying the floor no attention. You know what I'm trying to do, kids. And I, and I said, oh my goodness, but that's what it is in the spirit, amen? For, for that childhood stage, they kind of all over the place, and they, and, and, they, and they don't finish things, and they're excited about something one minute, and they say they want to do this in the ministry, and next thing you know, well, that ain't what I want to do no more. Amen? We have to be there for those that are going through that childhood stage. We have to be there for them to encourage them that when they're, when they're ready to get involved, not to take 
how mama used to say it, don't bite off more than you can chew. We kind of have to probably uh, put them into something that they can handle that don't last long until they grow up in it. I remember when, when I first uh, uh, got back in church and I got into this stage, I was, I was all over the place. I was cleaning the church and I was um, on the praise team. That's two. I was in the foods ministry. Uh, I think we were having classes too, when we having classes, and it was something else I was doing. Did I say cleaning the church? Food ministry, classes, Bible study. And I was very busy. Very, very busy. And at that time, for me, that was good because, you know, I was older and, you know, I had a whole lot of other stuff I was trying to get worked out on, you know, in the presence of God. Amen. But I was all over the place. Um, but the only thing was, I did not start something and stop it because it wasn't allowed, was it? You started something in that ministry, you had to finish it, amen? But that childhood stage, amen? Children have the tendency uh, to be very talkative, right? And you'll find that one Christian, right? Oh, my Lord, who is all over the place, talking to everybody about everybody. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Ooh-wee! Now, that kind of child could tear the whole ministry mm -hmm. up. And that's what happens. They go, they'll hear somebody talking and they be like, who, 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 who? Don't that sound like a little kid? Who y'all talking about? But they groan and they say, who, 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 who you talking about? And they say, you know, they take that bit of information and they go somewhere else and then that's when, when the elders and ministers have to come in and say, baby, we don't do that. Now, I don't know if it's all true, but what I would like for you to do is that you might have to, you know, kind of tone it down because somebody's feelings got hurt behind it. You know, you kind of have to talk to them like as if you're talking to a kid. You know, so because people are, when they're in that childhood stage, they are just as sensitive as a baby is. And you don't. You kind of don't want to offend them, but you don't want to go, you don't want them, they're old enough not to go unaddressed. And they have to be addressed, amen? And um, the only thing good about me and Kim is that um, we watched everybody else get in trouble. <laughs> and so Bishop wasn't no joke, so we watched everybody else get in trouble. So we knew what to do and what not to do so we didn't get in trouble. And um, a lot of folks will say, oh, he favored the parents. But no, we sat down and we watched long enough to find out, don't come to Bible study and don't come to church late if you call yourself in the praise team. If you call yourself on a white collar, you better not come in here late. He made sure <laughs> that if you was in a baby stage, childhood stage, you about to get out of it right now because it wasn't tolerated. If he found out you was gossiping, he pulled you in the office and told you we ain't gonna have it up in here. And then he will say, there is six exits in this church. You find out which one you need to walk out of. <laughs> and we heard, we would hear stuff like that. We were like, we ain't getting in no trouble. So we didn't get in no trouble, thank God. Amen? <laughs> we didn't get in no trouble. But that's what happens with the childhood. And they all over the place and, and, and Geez, they really get into stuff. And I, I just, I go back as I was putting this together and I'm thinking of faces and names and, you know, uh, they're good at the gossiping thing, you know, and keeping things started and, you know, and I remember that and causing division and, and I remember all of that, amen? But as leaders, we have to address it and we have to address it quickly um, due to the fact that other people could be terribly hurt behind it and possibly leave the ministry behind it. And quite sure we all have been through that, amen? But we have to do everything in love. Um, and when we do it in love, we have to address it. And once we address it, we build them up before they leave us. Mm -hmm. Because we can't, we can't address them and you know they're going to start feeling bad and they're going to try to defend themselves. And then finally, if they do come around and say, yeah, I understand, we got to make sure that when they leave our presence, 
They're not still down here. That we go ahead and speak them and lift them up and encourage them That's before true. they leave out of that That's meeting. Good. Amen? Yes, Y'all got that? Amen. Y'all got amen. that with the uh, uh, young children? Because I don't care whatever my grandson do, before I get finished talking to him, I make sure I tell him he's the greatest guy I ever knew in the whole world. And I say, you know, Grandma, I still love you. And it's all right. Not that if you do it again, you know what's going to happen. Oh, no, oh, no. But you know, you, you, you all right with me. Now come on, give me a hug. You know you're my favorite. And he go, I know. And then he leaves out of the room. Amen. So we don't want to leave nobody um, crippled and beat up. Amen. Mm-hmm. We don't want to leave them. So one uh, adulthood, and I'm going to talk about only one thing today. Only one thing today. Then we'll finish up next week. Uh, adulthood, esteeming earthly things lightly. Amen? Go to Hebrews 11, 24 and 26. And, and what I'm talking about here is that once you become mature in the things of Christ, you don't choose earthly things over your conviction of faith. You just don't. You know what I mean? You don't choose um, to do wrong purposely. Let me say that. You don't choose money over your faith. Amen? So let's go. Y'all there at Hebrews 11, 24 and 26? It says, by faith, when he had grown up, listen, talking about Moses. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen? It says here, he chose, meaning if he chose, that means he had a choice. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to obey the fleeting pleasures of sin. How many of you know when you're on your job and everybody else is talking about the Saturday night, right? And so when they hear you talking and they say, oh, uh, 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 ain't that right? And they try to get you engaged. What you going to do? Are you going to engage or are you going to say, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's not my, that's not my topic. Or are you going to con- are you going to care what people say about you? Amen. Right here, then Moses did not care. Amen. So it says twenty five. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead. Amen to his reward. Moses wasn't impressed with the people of Egypt. Amen? Meaning the people of the world. This is the mature people. They're not impressed with the things of the world or the people of the world. Even though he was the son of Pharaoh's uh, daughter and in line for the throne, Moses had honor and wealth and prestige. He had everything the earth had to offer. Mm -hmm. But he was more captivated was God, the one true God, than the treasures of the world. He turned away from the worldly riches for the true riches of God himself. Mm -hmm. Amen? And he made that choice. He made that choice. Amen? And so it says here, his spiritual growth was evident by choosing to persevere in that which God had called him and denying the things of the world and the people in it. Amen? And you find that a lot where, and, and I could probably go on, but I don't have time. But you find that a lot where people are one way when they're in church, but then when they get on the job, well, they still represent Jesus. Mm-hmm. They'll come in and they'll go, hallelujah. That's usually the loudest one in the corner. But you catch them on their job and they're talking like the world. they acting like the world. Amen. They're engaging in conversations of the world. Amen. And, and they don't want to be set aside or set apart because they, they can't handle the ridicule. Amen? That's it. Absolutely. They can't handle the ridicule. But Moses, listen to this, Moses was a very good example, amen, of the maturity in Christ. Amen? He was willing to let it all go for the sake of Christ. Amen? And, and, and that's the thing about being mature in the body of Christ. Amen? Are we willing to let things go? I have on my board, what are you married to that you just can't let go? What are you married to? And Moses wasn't married to his status. He wasn't married to the throne. He wasn't married, listen to this, of the riches that he had and the honor he had. He wasn't married to it. 
He was able to walk away. He had that encounter with God. He was able to walk away from it all. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stop right there. And I stopped at Philippians 3, 7, and 8. Amen? So we're going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can stop recording now. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel the spirit of heaviness. We just thank you for the garment of praise. praise. Yes. yes. And that's where we are, Father. Thank you for the garment of praise. Yes. We appreciate you, Father, for the word that came forth using Pastor uh, Rita Perry so mightily, Father. Yes. Growing up spiritually. Yes. So we just mm, we just thank you for the word, Lord. It's so so good, so enriching, and so encouraging, and, and building up on how we should treat other Christians and and recognize their stages in in their walk with you spiritually, Father. And, yes, Lord. and if we always have a if we have a word to give, Father, may we always be mindful to always back that up and lift them up, Father. Yes, yes. As, as the word of God came forth today. So, Father, thank you mm -hmm. for your protection. A, a thorny hedge of protection around us, Father, yes. as we go home to our destination throughout the week, every day of our lives. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we just praise you, Father. Thank you for setting me free. Amen. You know, and yes. thank you again for the ministry, Socor, Dr. Socorro Mesa, Father. So, she's, just, she will be missed. But we thank you for the seeds and the roots that she planted in all of us, Father. Yes. If it was just that moment, that, that uh, contact, Transfer is just right there on the spot for that one moment, Father. There was a seed that was planted. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for the fruit that come forth throughout the whole world that uh, through her ministry as Minister Socorro Mesa, as well as this mighty woman of God, Mrs. Maria Perry. And we honor her, we honor her, or and Pastor uh, Kimberly's mother, the, both of their parents, the yes, Mr. Yes. and Mrs. Perry, and on the 1st of April. Couple of days, I think Monday. Yeah. yeah we yes. just thank you, Father, that you are with yes, them Lord. during this this time to yes, to just Lord. celebrate their their life, her life, the Miss yes, Virginia Lord. Perry. Yes, Lord. We honor you, Father. Amen. Thank you. We honor you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.